What is going on here, Reynor? Dorian, look what I've got here. Oh, fascinating. Yes, these are uh, little copies of Statue of Liberty. Mm. But they are here today for purpose. We are going to be introduced to the best of American cuisine. Yes, of course, because our guest today is Agricultural Attaché at the US Embassy, Lucas Blaustein. Let's get started. Howdy! Hello, Hi, Nora. hello! Dorian, it's great to see you! So, Lucas, I guess we're ready to go. Please tell us what are we going to cook today and what are those? Yeah, I'm so excited to be here on Talk and Cook. We're actually going to be making chicken, apple, and right. corn. Mm -hmm. Chicken, apple, corn, chili. That's correct. This is the name, the actual name of the dish. This is the actual oh, name, yeah. yeah it, it, so you know, simple. <laughs> in the United States, sometimes our dishes explain what's in them. So right. the name of the yes. dish isn't actually very creative, it's literally just the ingredients. It's very easy to <laughs> memorize, right? Yes, yes, it is actually. Exactly. So tell us about this dish, about the origins, and uh, you can, um, by the way, lead the process and we can mm -hmm. be helpful. Okay. We can help you with. Yeah, so uh, everyone has their own dish for what chili is. Yeah. And chili actually started, you know, you've got a cowboy on the show today, so I had to yes, choose something exactly. to that came from Texas. On that, yeah. From oh, my home you're state. You're from Texas. I am originally from Texas. Yeah. Born and raised in Texas. Born and raised in Texas. Yeah. And chili a real came Texas man. from wow. San Antonio. Mm -hmm. where the cattle drives used to start a long time ago in the United States. So when we'd do cattle rustling, we'd go out, ride our horses, and gather up all the cattle. We'd start in San Antonio, and you needed something that was nutritious, healthful, delicious, that you could put on a horse and carry with you. Mm -hmm. So, thus, chili was mm -hmm. born. But yeah. there's so much regionalization with chili mm -hmm. that everyone has a different take on the dish and lots of people disagree about mm -hmm. what's in it. I think some Americans are going to be upset that I have <laughs> corn. corn. <laughs> and some people would even disagree with having beans in your chili. They would yeah. say, a good chili doesn't have beans. Other people would say, it's got to have beans. Yeah. What about apples? <laughs> good question. Why apples? So, I, I told you I grew up in Texas, right? Well, I'm actually now living in West Virginia. Mm. So whenever I go back to the United States, I have a small family farm in the state of West Virginia, mm -hmm. which you wow. may know that state um, from a song. Of course. What's yes. the song? You, you want to sing it with me? Why not? Okay, here we go. Two, three, one, go. Country roads take me home to the place I belong. West Virginia, Mount Mama, take me home. Country road. Wow, super! Yeah, that was, that was very that was good. That was fantastic. Yeah. It was unexpected. <laughs> We're going to adopt you in America. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're officially adopted. So yeah, West Virginia, it's the mountain state. And it's famous for its mountainous topography. Mm -hmm. It actually has a lot in common with southern Kazakhstan. And my farm, we grow lots of different kinds of fruit, but we grow apples. So oh, here's the funny thing. Now I see the connection. Yeah, yeah you're starting to get here, right? Yes, and, right. And, and in southern Kazakhstan, what's the biggest city? Almaty. Almaty, right? Almat. Yeah. Almat, apple. apple, home of the apple. Mm -hmm. So there's so many ways we don't appreciate that food connects us. Mm -hmm. It brings us together. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm from a place that's so far away, but we have so much in common with Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. Here I am, an apple farmer on this beautiful morning here in Astana, <laughs> right. making apple, corn, and chicken chili. Chili, yes. Yeah. That was the most amazing, I think, intro to, to the dish. Of course, so, of course. yes, thank you. Thank you for that. So let us, uh, let us begin. Please so what, what is the first lead step? Lead the process. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to bring a dish to heat. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can, um, we need another pot here. Yeah. Another pot, of course. The bigger one. The bigger yeah, one. Yeah, bigger okay. one's better. Mm. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here. We're going to want to get a little bit of olive oil. Olive oil, of course. Right over here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to want to add that to this dish and we're going to want to bring it to a simmer. So what we can do here is we can take some of this chicken cubes mm -hmm. and 
What I would suggest is we take a little bit of this butter. It'll help with the browning process. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna brown this chicken. Yeah. And the reason is with this dish, it's very important. We're gonna go through multiple cooking steps and we're gonna be reusing this. See, when you look at this chicken, you've got all this beautiful fat in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we throw this in the hot oil with a little bit of butter, it's gonna brown up. Mm -hmm. All those proteins are gonna start to break down. Right. And they're gonna make yummy stuff. <laughs> and we don't wanna throw this away, so we need a little bit of extra because we're gonna keep using it to cook. Mm -hmm. okay. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is just throw some of this chicken into our dish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So tell us, why did you choose specifically this kind of dish? Well, besides uh, it being U.S. chicken, which, you know, is important to me, uh, the cultural connections with Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at the apples, you know, I have an apple farm. When you look at the chicken, it's the number one product that we sell to Kazakhstan. Uh, when you look at the corn and the beans, these are from this region. Um, the peppers, fresh grown. This dish represents so much of what we share. Uh, it also has a really unique American history, a U.S. history, mm -hmm. because we're looking at a dish here that, that is a Texas dish that traces its roots to the cowboy culture in San Antonio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually this dish, chili in general, dates back to 1880 in San Antonio when they used to do the cattle drives. And they came up with this dish, they'd sell it at market. Mm -hmm. And it has a strong cultural connection to where I grew up in the United States. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna add a little bit of butter in here, a little more butter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with Julia Childs. She says butter never hurt anybody. <laughs> yes, a little yes, more exactly. butter is always good. All right, and we're gonna put this aside. I think we've probably got enough, well, let me see here. And what we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna wanna make sure that this chicken browns. So you can see here, some of it's getting browned on the edges. So yes. we're just gonna to wanna to be mm -hmm. you know, constantly moving it around. We're gonna to wanna to be mixing up that butter until that butter gets nice and melted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna let it brown out. Okay. But you can smell that. Oh, yes, I'm, so I'm, good, starting, I'm starting, starting to it smell, good. yes, yes, it's good, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you can see here, we're starting to get browned up. You see yes. how it's changing yes. colors? Mm -hmm. So we want all that pink, flesh to just disappear. Yes. Um, and then we're gonna drain this, take the chicken off to the side, mm -hmm. uh, and then we will keep cooking. Tell us, what is it like to grow up in... Uh... Yeah, that was my question, yes. We want to hear more about region you grew, grew up, um, about Texas. It's like very, mm -hmm. very, um, I think, American, of you know, course, American, a, American region. So like tell first us more image about of America. your experience growing mm -hmm. up. Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, when they think of the United States, Texas is one of the first places that comes to mind. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, growing up in Texas, in some ways it's very similar to growing up in Kazakhstan. Mm. It's a step. It's pretty flat. We, you know, call it big sky country. The sky just goes on and on and on. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot of trees in the part of the state where I'm from, mm -hmm. but it, it's a huge state. Mm -hmm. So the geography changes a lot mm -hmm. throughout the state. Um, to drive from one end of the state to the other takes over a day. Wow. So yeah. just driving nonstop. Mm -hmm. So it's an enormous state and that means it, it changes. I'm from the Gulf Coast region mm -hmm. uh, of the state. So I grew up about three hours north of the ocean. And the kinds of products that we grow there are very different than the kinds of products they grow in other parts of Texas, because mm. you've got a lot more water and a lot more heat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a lot of rice, um, we do some corn, soybeans, mm -hmm. uh, sorghum, that's, and then cattle, cattle, lots cattle, of beef yes. cattle from where I'm from. It's about horse riding, I think it's very, of very course. popular. Yep, I grew up riding horses. All right, so this is starting to look good here. We're starting to get that browning. So we're gonna set this off to the side in a second here. We just wanna make sure we get these last little bits moved around to the center of the pan. Make sure this is all well and cooked through. All right, so this is good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna remove the heat now. Mm -hmm. And this is browned. So you can see that color. That's the kind of color you want. You want this nice brown color here. Yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh, so you can see great. There. And we're just gonna take a, an extra dish. We need a strainer. Okay, 
Okay, now what we need to do is we're gonna, we're gonna take low heat and we're gonna add in our onions and garlic. Oh, yes. So what we need to do now, I think we've got two onions over here, some garlic over here, we're gonna do some chopping. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Let mincing, chopping. chopping. Yes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this, this onion here and some of this garlic and yeah. we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reduce the heat here just so it's a little bit hot, a little bit of a simmer. We can take that pot off just for a minute. Um, so we're gonna wanna chop the onion. Yes, so we'll do it. dice it into mm -hmm. cubes. Into and cubes. then for the garlic, we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna fully mince the garlic. Mm -hmm. So um, and the reason for that is we don't want those bites of garlic in our dish. We want yeah. the garlic flavor there, but we don't want somebody to take a bite of our chili and be like, oh, that's definitely a garlic bit. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, it's totally deliberate that I'm giving you both the hard jobs. Yes. So, you know, I can just see here with the oil while... Mm -hmm. And I'll do like little cubes, right? Cubes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Nice thing yeah, about this dish, an easy way to remember how to, cook, to cut everything up, yeah. except for our garlic, which we're mincing, everything else needs to be in cubes. We've got chicken cubes, we've got onion cubes, we're gonna have chili cubes here in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is cubed. We'll also have apple cubes. Apple cubes, yes. So mm -hmm. it's a fun dish to make with kids, especially, yeah. because you're teaching them about shapes. So what are we cooking today? We're cooking cubes. <laughs> <laughs> so you. tell us about more, more about your uh, experience of living here in Kazakhstan. You know, I love living in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. It's it's an absolutely beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. <laughs> you know, it reminds me of home in so many ways. I tell you what I actually do in the embassy and where this recipe came from yes. is from the US Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. oh. And I am mm -hmm. the agricultural advisor in the U.S. Embassy, mm -hmm. both to the U.S. government mm -hmm. and then to foreign governments. Mm -hmm. So I work in the embassy helping to find areas of cooperation between Kazakh agriculture and American agriculture, U.S. agriculture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the reason that I get to do fun things like this <laughs> is because I'm the food guy and everybody yes, loves exactly. food. Yeah. So um, that's the reason that I'm here in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And Kazakhstan is hugely, hugely important to global agriculture. Yes. It's the seventh largest producer of wheat in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if Kazakhstan has a great wheat crop, it ensures the world can eat more, be better fed, especially countries in Central Asia and South Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Kazakhstan is very, very important. Kazakhstan also has a lot of beef cattle herds, yes. a big dairy sector. You know, today we're cooking American food, but if you cook Kazakh food, you see all those influences, right? Yeah. I think someone told me once that the only animal that eats more meat than Kazakhs are wolves. <laughs> so, and it's yes. true, right? Kazakhs love it, to say it? it about themselves. Yeah, well, it's, and it's true. So, you know, we're big meat eaters in the United States mm -hmm. too. And why do you get that meat? Because you have bounty, you have the steppe. Mm -hmm. You have this beautiful landscape here in Kazakhstan. And I've had the pleasure to get to go out and work with farmers here in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They're hardworking people. And there's so much that we share in common between the United States and yes. Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. I'm a farmer from the United States. I'm also yeah. a diplomat, but I get to go out there and I get to just meet people that are out there every day mm -hmm. trying to solve some of the same problems we have in the United States. Yeah. And like for such... example, what are the main what are the main points of communication of cooperation between for example Farmers of our two countries, is, I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Nowadays. Well, you know, today we've got U.S. chicken on the table. Yes. And one of the things that's really fascinating about this is this is a frozen product that comes in. Mm -hmm. It's really high quality, very safe. But as I mentioned, you won't easily find it on a store shelf because it's mostly going into processed yes. products. Yeah. Well, where is that chicken in the store coming from? It's being grown right here in Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. And do you know where the grandparents of those chickens in mm -hmm. Kazakhstan are from? Uh, please tell us. The United States, oh. of course. <laughs> so we actually export a lot of the genetics, we call it, the, the older sire animals mm -hmm. to Kazakhstan. So these little eggs, they come in, these little day old chicks, they come in. Yes. And their grandparents are in the US. And you can see that, you get this beautiful big piece of chicken, almost looks like a turkey, it's so big. Yeah. <laughs> and that's grown in the US. So we're we're making sure not only that we're exporting high quality meat to Kazakhstan, yes. mm -hmm. we're helping Kazakh farmers. 
We're helping them grow more, higher quality, with less, using U.S. technology. Mm -hmm. So there's so many areas we're cooperating. Mm -hmm. And all these challenges that you face every day from climate to pests, to all these really difficult things. It's difficult to be a farmer. Yes. These mm -hmm. are global challenges. The solutions are local. The right. solutions are local, but yes. the, the challenges, the challenges problems, are global. The global. solutions are local. They're the same. Very good motto, by They're the way. They're the same. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So we've got this back to heat. You have done both done an amazing job, by the way. Clearly, oh, you are experts at this. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is we are going to add these ingredients to this buttery yumminess. Okay. Mm. So let's just go ahead and one by one we can dump that in. Mm -hmm. I go first. Is my onion. Cubes. All right, perfect. We got our onion cubes. Now we need our garlic. Mm -hmm. Now what we're doing right now is we want to we want to raise the temperature here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back up, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to coat this all in that that yummy chicken butter olive oil goodness. ask you again about your job actually. Yeah. What is the most challenging aspect of your job in Boy, your opinion? You know that's a great question. <laughs> um, you know I find that the differences in agriculture can sometimes be pretty extreme between different countries. Mm -hmm. The kind of crops we grow, um, the, the way that different countries approach science sometimes mm -hmm. can be very different. Mm. So finding areas where we can cooperate um, again, those local solutions, yes. figuring out how we can find small areas of windows of cooperation when we have big differences, sometimes mm -hmm. on the way we grow crops or the way we approach science. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most difficult part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, that, and to be honest, uh, I, I'm very busy. I mean, Kazakhstan is a big country, and mm -hmm. I don't just work in Kazakhstan. I work in the rest of Central Asia. Yes. Yeah. So I'm always traveling around and mm. getting to see different things, which is I love, mm -hmm. but it takes me away from my family. Yeah. So that is probably the second most challenging part of my job. The first is finding where that science and cooperation can happen. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier for working with the farmer in Kazakhstan and other countries, mm. but the science and the cooperation can be challenging at times. And the second part is just being away from home. Yeah. So it's great to be here on Talk and Cook. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to take this beautiful, yummy dish that we Amazing, have. Amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Looks really unique. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to take some of the top off here. So I want to make sure that I get all of this mixed back up. And then if you can hand me that dish right there, we're just going to take enough of this um, where this is going to go on the side. And the reason is we're going to use this as a topping to mm. our chili. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we get those bites of apple and corn and just caramelized deliciousness um, when we go ahead and finish the dish. So we're getting this enough. We're going to have to kind of, I would divide the portion in half roughly um, just to make sure that we've got enough for three people. Mm -hmm. Maybe one more scoop here of apples. All right. So this is going to go aside. Just going to put that aside again. Now with this, we can actually, we can maybe try to do this in the pot here, is we're going to go ahead and plug this in and we're just going to blend uh, it up. Okay. Okay, now while we're waiting for our dish to be boiled, I'm going to share with you some interesting facts about American cuisine. The foundation of American cuisine is rooted in the traditions of 17th and 18th century English culinary practices, blended with some Native American traditions. That's how dishes made from corn and sweet potatoes became popular. In the 19th and 20th centuries, American cuisine significantly expanded due to the influx of immigrants from around the world. This led to the incorporation of German-style Hamburg steaks, sausages, Italian pizza and pasta into American culinary culture. 
The average American eats about 60 burgers per year. The burger's origins trace back to the late 19th century, though its exact history is debated. According to one story, in 1900s Louis Lassen, the owner of Louis Lunch in Connecticut, served a customer a beef patty between two slices of toast upon request for meal on the go. Another tale suggests German immigrants brought the concept from Hamburg. The hot dog introduced by German immigrants in the 1960s quickly became a symbol of American street food culture. Legend has it that in St. Louis, a sausage vendor served sausages in buns when he ran out of gloves. Quickly embraced by the working class in cities like New York and Chicago, the hot dog soon found its place even at elite gathering. In 1939, during King George VI and Queen Elizabeth's first visit to the US, President Franklin D. Roosevelt and his wife Eleanor hosted a picnic featuring hot dogs. When the king asked how to eat it, Roosevelt famously replied, put it in your mouth and chew it until you've eaten it. Thus, the hot dog became a symbol of informal high-level meetings, giving rise to the term hot dog diplomacy. Get that all really well blended up, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna add it. All right, so we can see here we have this beautiful, beautiful puree now. So we've taken again, I'm gonna do a before and after comparison here. So we've got our apples, our corn, all of our goodness in this pot, and then we've taken the rest of it, we've pureed it fully. Mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this back to the pot. So it's kind of really, a um, with some of the side dishes, it's a one pot recipe. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and just dump this in. Now, we wanna take a little bit of our, or we can maybe we'll throw this this yes. way, right into the, the sink there. Now we've gotten our chicken bullion going over here. Mm -hmm. And this chicken stock, um, and we wanna go ahead and get a ladle. There we are. We're just gonna mix this up to make sure that it's nice mm -hmm. and consistent. Okay, I've got it at low heat right now. I'm just gonna raise the heat a little bit. And we're just gonna take a little bit of this here and we're gonna add it in, slowly, as we're mixing. So, we're mixing this in, we wanna make sure that we get this all mixed up. Kind of a little more of a liquidy consistency. And we're gonna add one more. Who taught you to cook this dish? Um, so this dish was uh, actually um, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's <laughs> dish. <laughs> so we have a program called My Plate, um, mm. where we teach Americans to cook. Yeah. And oh, really? this this is actually a dish from USDA's My Plate program, and you can see how healthy it is, right? We're not adding any yes. salts or sugars yes, or anything. Yes. It's all very fresh ingredients. So this um, dish is from USDA. It's actually from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, so this is good now. What we're going to do is we're going to add about two cups of of chicken broth in here, mm -hmm. um, and this is now going to be our chili. So actually the easiest way to probably do this is I am just gonna go ahead and raise this. Yep, that's fine. Right mm -hmm. Now we wanna take our, our green chilies. Okay, I I'm gonna go ahead and add them in. Take our black beans here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can see 
you know, this it's kind of got a brown um, color to it with a little bit of those chilies just floating around. Yes. Um, for this, I'll just do my hand here. Uh, you want about a cup, so mm -hmm. probably about a half or a third of this. So it's like a soup. Not quite. You'll see because <laughs> when we cook it, we're going to cook it on high heat. Mm -hmm. We're going to boil off a lot of this water. Mm -hmm. ah, and what's going to yeah. be left is like a chili. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we want to take this up to high heat. Up to nine. Mm -hmm. And then we're just going to go ahead and stir again. Um, whenever you're adding an ingredient, it's good to stir just so you don't get everything stuck yes. in one spot on the bottom of the pot. And um, we're then going to go ahead and add in our chicken. So we've added in our chicken now, mm -hmm. and now we've got this all good. And what we're gonna do here is we're just going to have this on very high heat. Mm -hmm. We're gonna bring it to a simmer. Yeah. So we wanna see those bubbles mm -hmm. going. Mm -hmm. We wanna make sure that we're getting that really good uh, heat going on the pot before we put the cover on it. And I like to use a little trick. You've got the little hole here, but I like to just... All right, there's the right size. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do one of these where we just kind of leave it off just a little bit. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my preferred technique. Mm -hmm. um, because again, we want, if we cover it, that moisture is gonna actually hit the top of the pot, and it's gonna go back in. Mm -hmm. We wanna boil off that water. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're just gonna keep it like this. Mm -hmm. so, All right, we're so, gonna leave it for 15 minutes. Yes, yes, now not. we wanna make sure that we're getting that high heat, that bubbling uh, first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, until it gets to to a simmer, not a bad idea to stir it every once in a while. Okay. Um, It'll take longer to simmer that way, but you just want to make sure those ingredients are getting nice and mixed up. Yes. Okay, nice. Yay. So, what do we have here? Yes. We have the final part. our yeah. chili, or at least the base of our chili. Mm -hmm. So, you can see here how this has all boiled off, mm -hmm. and we've gotten this delicious, delicious, mm -hmm. nice mixture of very nice. beans and chicken yes, and green looking. chilies. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do now is we've reduced the heat here. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it on low heat. And we're just going to remove it here, um, and we're going to go ahead and serve it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we can't forget our topping. So we're yes. going to come back here to the topping. If I could get another um, scooper. Or here, I can, I can just use this one. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just going mm. to top it here with yes. our topping. That were apples and corn. Yes. And onion with garlic. Yeah, perfect mix. This caramelized juiciness mm -hmm. here. And this gives it a punch of color. Um, we also get kind of that nice crunchiness mm -hmm. on top of our dish. But we're missing a couple more things here. We need to add some greens. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to wanna cut up some of our fresh herb and just put some of that cilantro there on the top. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take uh, a dollop of our sour cream. So we're gonna just take a dollop here and mm -hmm. the sour cream is gonna cut the spice. Ah, so we're gonna go ahead I and see. put that on the side. I like it on the side, you can mix it in. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just gonna go ahead and put that on the side. Now it looks like, you know, hot cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were kind of worried there for a minute. You were like, what is this cowboy making? Um, you know, in America, we don't care how it looks, right? We care yeah. how it tastes. Yeah. So, um, but now we're getting, yeah, we're getting that. But you still yeah, managed to it make it look okay. beautiful. So there we go. So now we've gotten all these beautiful colors mm -hmm. and textures. Oh, Super. It's... And now we're inviting you to our dining table uh, where we can um, finally taste it. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I'm excited. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, guys, now it's time for the best part of our show, for the best part of our job, actually. Yes. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Thank you, Rahmet. Rahmet, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. 
So I think we can mix a little bit, yes? Yeah, you mix it Sour a little cream. bit. Sour cream. How would you rate your own dish? <laughs> <laughs> Made by your own hands. <laughs> I think you're happy. I would, yeah, I would give this like an eight or a nine out of ten. Mm. This reminds me of home. Yeah. You know, so much of what's important about food is its memory, its connection. Mm. There's so much meaning in this dish, right? We've got those apples from Kazakhstan. We've got that corn from the United States. We have that delicious U.S. chicken. Mm -hmm. That's all coming together in this dish. The flavors, the cumin, that balance of sweet and sour and spice. Yes, very symbolic, yes, by yes. the way, yes, very symbolic. It reminds me of home. Mm. When I take a bite of this, I think about my mom, I think about my family, I think about being back on my farm in the United States. Yes. So I suggest you to try something that reminds us of home, our home, yes. of our mothers. And which means also the symbol of what, our hospitability. What are these, do donuts? Donuts. <laughs> yes, this is what you call donuts. <laughs> yes. We call it bowersacks. 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 And here you can uh, sour cream, but it's sweet. So you can use oh, it. Uh, okay. With... So we've got all kinds of different sour yes, cream around yes. the table. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try one of these. So I just dip it like this. Mm -hmm. All right, and just all in. Yes, all, all in. in. Yes, all in. Yes. Okay. Go forward. Mm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Very about good. It? Yes. Amazing, actually. It took me one bite, actually, to say it, to judge the dish. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, you're very welcome. I hope that you both enjoy it. And again, it's a taste of our cultures combined, right? And we also yeah. have little symbols um, of American. Culture, yeah, yeah, yes, right yeah, behind yeah, Agnes you. Mary so, back yes. here, the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Statue of Liberty, yeah. yes. It's very related to food and our our theme today. So, yes, yes, of course. Hey, you know, part of the, the fun thing about what I do, getting to travel and live all around the world and share food with everyone, try local dishes, is also introduce people to the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the best parts is getting to introduce our food and our, our culture and a little bit of our history as well. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And a little bit of our outfit, yes? It's like, <laughs> well, it's yeah, no, yeah, yeah, now we fit yes, in perfectly, yes, right? Yes, you know? Right. It suits you really well, yes, especially with you. your lipstick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Before you go, we've got one more present for you, actually. Okay, another yep. surprise. Another right. surprise. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you so, so much. So these are our national, actually, uh, not national, but these are dessert for you. These are sweets, mm -hmm. chocolate oh, wow. uh, with gent inside. Gent is basically um, uh, ground and roasted millet mixed with sugar and butter, mm -hmm. so the flavor is perfect. Excellent. One this will be perfect popular. thing to finish off a yes. nice chili, right? Yes. Yeah. Just true. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. That looks delicious. Absolutely delicious. That's it for today. For more episodes of Talk and Cook program, you can always watch Silk Way TV channel.